Concord here. I've been meaning to do this video for some time and then I actually completely put it off and then my wife reminded me why don't you give your viewers a bit of a tour of your room and show them what equipment you're using. So that's what I'm going to do today. Before I get into it though it'd be awesome if you could subscribe that would really help the channel out. However if you're coming back and you're not going to subscribe I still appreciate the views so thanks for returning that's awesome quick little insight to, to me, myself I've been into audio for over 20 years I used to be an installer of hi-fi gear I used to run the cables I used to do all that mount TVs put antennas on people's roofs I used to run the cat 5 cat 6 cable so I've been into it for some time. I worked in the industry. I've also worked in retail of hi-fi and I am continuing my journey with this channel and I still love hi-fi and it's something gonna, something I'm gonna continue to do. So with that out of the way, I wanna do this in three parts. I'm gonna give you a first part view of my two channel audio setup. The second will be my home theater setup the third will be my room acoustics and I can tell you room acoustics is something that gets missed quite a bit and it can make a difference to your room. I've done a few seminars, I'm not an expert when it comes to room acoustics however I'm knowledgeable enough to know how it works and when I've made changes in my room it's amazing. So it's worth spending money on, you know, cables, but maybe think about room acoustics as well. But that'll be in part three, but I'm gonna give you a tour of my two channel audio setup. So let's go have a look. Okay, why don't we start with what record players, what turntables I use. Okay, I do, I admit, I keep the covers and I still cover my records. Even though it's got a dust cover, I still keep it. I just like to keep it dust free as much as possible. Reduces those pops and crackles. Anyway, I'm using a music core. 9.1 and it's using a Autophon LVB250 cartridge which I've been really happy with and this turntable actually was a turntable I got when I had to get another one repaired and the owner said look I've got this one as a display model hasn't been used much would you be interested in getting this while I repair your other one and I was really keen, saw it, and really liked it, and put this cartridge... Oh, I think I actually had the Autophon bronze uh, cartridge on it, and then I went to the LVB. So cartridges is something I want to later try, try different ones, go to a MC or a different MM. But at this stage, this is the turntable I'm using. It's basically a project audio because the music hall get made in the Project Audio factory, I believe, because there's a Project Audio arm. And that's the turntable we're using. Okay, second piece of equipment. We do have a second turntable. This is the one that had to get repaired. And in the meantime, while it was getting repaired, I got the music hall. And it's a project audio, really happy with it. So I'm using the Autophon Blue on this turntable. And we basically use this turntable when we buy secondhand records. And once we've cleaned those secondhand records, we try them on this and good to go. I use a cork mat on both turntables as I don't like the cloth ones because the cloth can still get dust and lint and it still picks up and it puts it on the record so I prefer the cork personally. The other thing I will say 
this is, I've heard this, it's argumentative, what you do here. If you're going away or your turntable is going to be lying dormant for some time, just take it off and just let the rubber band sit idle for some time. That's if you're going away, you're not, you know you're not going to be using it. Take or leave that. Some people swear by it just to make so it doesn't get a kink. It won't really get a kink, but it might just get kind of a bulge because it's just sitting on that. But up to you. You can just leave it there and just remember when you come back, maybe put a post-it note on top that you've taken the rubber band off. And yeah. So I was going to sell this turntable and when I got the music hall, but in the end, I ended up keeping it and I may sell it. I still may sell it. It's got a speed box, so so the speed is accurate underneath. This was one of the Project Audio's turntables that actually came with the speed box. So that's my second turntable. So the Macintosh MP100 Phono Preamp. So this is the Macintosh MP100 Phono Preamp. I did do a video on this, I gave my thoughts, but this is our main Phono Preamp that we use when we're listening to records, and I really love it. It's a clean, clean, detailed sound. So if you want something like that, this maybe is something for you. Really happy with it, check out my video. Uh, it gives all the details on what is about this phono preamp, so check that out. And I'll show you what preamp I'm using. So this is the preamp that I'm using, the Macintosh MX134 preamp. Now, this is new old stock, and I got really lucky with this preamp. So I got lucky with this preamp. It was new old stock and just sitting there. They hadn't sold it. And amazingly, they said, look, we've got a Macintosh. It's got no HDMI. It's got optical coax, but we can't sell it because it doesn't have all the mod cons. And it still had the price tag on it. And amazingly, it was an awesome find and buy and picked it up. And haven't regretted it ever since. It's been great. So moving right along to the power amp. This is what's powering my BMW 800 series. Is the Macintosh MC312. Now this power amp is just awesome. I love it. It gives me plenty of headroom with the speakers. It doesn't have any trouble powering the BMW 800 series and I know if I hook up other speakers to this Macintosh MC312 I know it's going to run them just fine so this power amp is something that I've spent money on and it's here to stay and I'd say it'll last me a very very long time and I just love it okay on to the next piece okay so the other piece of equipment for my two channel audio setup is the power station. So this gives me all the clean power to all my equipment here. Funnily enough, you can actually see here, it says 245. Here in Oz, we do 240. But the reason it's saying 245 is because it's during the middle of the day. It's also the summer holidays. Everyone's down on the beach, down at the coast. So power's not getting used up much so the incoming power is high come 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. when people are home from work or whatever that'll actually sometimes go down to 238 so this power station actually regulates it cleans it up and throws it out to all the equipment so that's the other piece of gear I got and yeah and Funnily enough, when we've had some thunderstorms and we have had a power outage, power outage, this has come in handy so, so much and has protected the gear from being zapped. I also have cord and isotech cables being used with this. 
Now, with all this equipment here, in terms of interconnects, I'm using AudioQuest cables, Sydney, Angel, and I'm using cord speaker cables. I just did a review on those, I gave my thoughts. I'm using the cord Epic X. I'm really happy with those cables. The more I listen, the more I, I like them. I did have some other cables that I really liked, but the cord just outdid them and I really like it. But this is my two channel setup. For streaming, my other piece of device is the Cambridge MXN 10 and it's over there. So the gear over there is my home theater and I'll do another video and I'm waiting on a power amp to come and then I'll give you my thoughts on my home theater equipment. And the speakers I'm using are BMW 800 series. And they're sitting just there. Now the other piece of equipment that I have that I still use, it's fairly old, is my Sony 5 disc changer. Whew, you know what? It didn't get used that much. I still listen to CDs, but not often. Because I, the alternative is streaming. So if I want to listen to a digital source, I'll go to a streamer. I still have CDs, I have lots of CDs, but this is what I use now, and wow, look at that. It's like I'm seeing it for the first time. No, okay, it's not that bad. But uh, yeah, Sony CD changer. They don't make CD changers that much, or I don't know if they still make them at all. It's just a single disk drive now, so. I've kind of got some nostalgia for this and I still use it and I still like it. I wouldn't mind getting a really nice high quality CD player, but not at this stage. So that's my Sony 5 disc CD changer and occasionally still use it. Well. I hope you've enjoyed that tour of my two channel audio setup and be sure to check out the separate videos where I give you my thoughts on some of those components. Now if you need some company walking your dog or driving to work or doing whatever you're doing I do have movie podcasts they're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.